Hello and welcome to this edition of 101 with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. I'm Lorna Virgilia and thank you for joining us. Hello Mr. Leggett, how are you? How are you doing today? Summer is almost officially over, isn't it? <laughs> how was Going your... by so fast. <laughs> uh, it does. How was your summer break? <laughs> well, I didn't have much of a break. Uh, an awful lot of work throughout the summer. Number of conferences, meetings, and preparation for the ongoing challenges we face in the years coming before us. Uh, as well as concluding a lot of things that we uh, wanted to complete at the end of the financial year for FY14. School year started. Over 154,000 MCPS students are back in the classrooms. Um, the system absorbed over 2,800 new students this year. Um, what is your expectation for this school year, especially when it comes to funding for new construction? Well, the beginning of the school year is always exciting. I used to say when I was a kid that there are two exciting days about school. The opening day and the end of school. And the, end. <laughs> the challenge is what happens in between. In between. All <laughs> <laughs> but it was very exciting. Um, I had an opportunity to participate with the superintendent, John Starr, myself and a number of other people at a new school. Uh, that is the Wilson Wim School in the Clarksburg area. It is named for a noted family member of the Wims family, a patriarch for many years, who really worked very hard, was a role model for the Clarksburg area and for all of Montgomery County. Uh, so the school, beautiful school, technology, uh, environmental enhancements, but more importantly, the enthusiasm of the kids, uh, the families, the parents, the staff, the teachers. Uh, when you walked into the room and walked into the school building itself, it just radiated with that kind of enthusiasm. And so it was a really an uplifting day to go into a new school, new challenges, but also very good opportunities for our school system and for our kids. Yeah. When you talk about education, you always talk about the fact that uh, Montgomery County is gearing up to offer world-class education to its students. Uh, that school is absolutely, just said it, it's incredible. It's 21st century. Um, we want more schools like that in Montgomery County. Well, certainly we do. We cannot offer world-class education in less than uh, acceptable schools. We still have a number of schools that are overcrowded. We have schools that are challenged in terms of maintenance requirements. Uh, and so we need to do much more in terms of providing the infrastructure for our educational system. Uh, we had a very good uh, fight last year in Annapolis, came very close to getting some relief. Uh, we got some additional support from the governor in his budget, and we reallocated or shifted some items here locally. But you can only do so much of that for so long. Uh, we need a long-term infusion of additional resources in order to meet the growing demands of Montgomery County. Uh, we increased by 2,800 students this year. And over the next few years, we're likely to increase by another 10,000 students. There'll be about 25 additional, 25,000 additional students in a relatively short period of time. And the facilities simply cannot accommodate those at the schedule that we're embarked on. And so what we have to do now is to make certain we get long-term uh, resources to in order to, address, uh, to uh, uh, effectively meet that challenge. Um. You, the county executive um, from Prince George's County and also from Baltimore, um, testified up in Annapolis earlier this year during the legislative session asking for additional funding. That was kind of like putting the foot on the door for that effort. Um, what needs to happen next? Well, we have to go back and put the foot on the neck. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that it takes, right? Yes, that's what it takes. <laughs> But I think we made a very strong case, and I think people fully understand that we are the largest communities, uh, counties in all of America, we, uh, Montgomery County. We have over 40 plus percent of the entire student population in the state of Maryland. And our schools are really, really at a point where we really need the help and assistance of the state. Uh, what we're looking at now is what would that look like? Uh, how can we address that within the confines of the budgets that we have? And do we need other resources in order to accommodate the level of growth that we anticipate? I think that we'll have levels of success. We have at least one more year in order to get this right. Uh, but, but after 2016-17, 
unless we have additional resources, that our problem becomes much, much worse for us. Uh, infrastructure undoubtedly is it's important, but uh, we also need good teachers in the classrooms. You are an educator. Uh, do you miss it, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> on occasion, How does that compare to being county uh, executive? Uh, on, on occasion, you have the feelings of, boy, it would be wonderful to be in the classroom right now. But there's a different type of teaching experience. I've taught at the law school level, at the professional level, for students who are basically already graduates, young adults. It is a huge challenge to teach the young people in our school system today. Just last year, I had an opportunity to do just that. I was the teacher for the day. And that was uh, enough, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was a challenging day. When I say teacher for the day, I didn't go in to lecture to a particular class, but I took on the responsibility and the roles of a teacher for an entire day. And I started at about 7.15, 7.30 in the morning. And about 4.30 or 5 o'clock, I was totally exhausted. There's so many different things that you have to do, and to think that you have to do that each and every day throughout the entire school year, when you have such a demand on you from parents, administrators, the students, and to perform at the level that our teachers perform, given those challenges, it is remarkable. We have some outstanding teachers, outstanding administrators. And so I am really at awe that, you know, about the role that they play, how well they do it, and what we can do to assist them. We need to make certain that their job is made easier, give them the support that they want, reduce that load in terms of the number of teachers per student, make certain they have the technology, the training, and all of the resources that they need in order to be successful. It's an enormous job. It is. Um, before we get out of uh, the education topic, there are a couple of things that I wanted to address. Um, the county's Office of Human Rights uh, holds this annual forum on bullying, and it is a reality still in, in our schools in Montgomery County, creating awareness and uh, prevention techniques, teaching them to parents and educators is important. Uh, what else do you feel that the county needs to do to aggressively attack bullying? Well, first of all, we need to make certain that people fully understand that bullying is not play. It's not a fun activity. It is something that is serious, it negatively affects other people, and it provides the kind of uh, reaction that really can be very disruptive in a school system. So we have to address it as a problem, a real problem that needs solution, mean, meaning the parents, the teachers, students all working together to address it as a problem, something that is serious, not a joke. We're going to take a short break, Mr. Leggett, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. There's a reason why area law enforcement are out enforcing pedestrian and traffic safety laws and preventing killer pedestrian crashes. Be alert. Be street smart. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> Now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back to One on One with Montgomery County Executive Isaiah Leggett. I'm Lauren Ovigili. Uh Mr. Leggett, earlier this year you appointed a human trafficking task force 
to bring ideas to the table about how to uh, prevent, combat, and perhaps the creation of new legislation. A hearing, county council will be listening to testimony. What are we looking for? Well, looking for change. We're looking to make certain that people understand that human trafficking, especially of our young people, is a very serious challenge in Montgomery County. Uh, people don't recognize it as such because oftentimes you don't see it. But there are victims that are out there, often very, very young people, many of whom are brought to the community, many of whom are actually in Montgomery County to start with. And so what we need to do is to make certain that we provide the protection, the education, the counseling, and the support that young people and families actually need in order to prevent and not to become victims. And once you are caught up in that traffic, once you're caught up in it, it's a web that is very difficult to get out. So the challenge is to stop and preclude people from getting in in the first place. Counseling helps, education helps, making certain that we see and understand the signs that are out there, treating the crimes of human trafficking as a very serious crime whereby we are given the appropriate punishment. And we're also providing counseling and support bringing those people out of human trafficking so that they are not stigmatized for life. Uh, we are looking at a variety of things to try to address this. This is why we have a task force. Uh, we'll talk briefly across the entire spectrum to our community. Uh, we'll testify before the county council and come up with legislative and regulatory changes that I think can help us in Montgomery County to at least address the problem. But we're not gonna solve it alone here in Montgomery County, uh, but we can become a model and be supportive in many ways of some of the other efforts that are going on, not just here locally, but internationally, to make certain that we're doing our part. Um, perhaps some people are watching and might be questioning human trafficking in Montgomery County. Where does it happen? How does it happen? Well, the most obvious place is the internet. Uh, the most obvious place oftentimes is picking people up at the shopping mall. The most obvious place are the kinds of things that kids get into each and every day. They are attracted to some things that obviously are destructive. Uh, they, are lie, they are lied to by people who we sometimes call pimps and others. Uh, they are pushed into areas that they are not comfortable and oftentimes find themselves in a situation that they cannot easily get out of. And so it's a real problem. And when you look at Montgomery County, it's a, comparatively it's an affluent community and therefore uh, it is here uh, because you have people who can afford to participate in it. Cannot participate in this. This is not acceptable and we will punish those who are engaged in it. Do you have a particular um, legislation on mine already? Not yet. We are looking at a variety of things, but one of the things we want to do is make sure that there are appropriate punishment, make certain that we provide the counseling, make certain that we provide some warning signs to parents and others, teachers, so that they can recognize the challenges that human trafficking presents in our community. Let's talk about uh, a little bit about innovation in, in the county. Uh, Montgomery County has been designated as tech savvy. <laughs> and the only one named in the state of Maryland by the Public Technology Institute. Uh, we're getting techy in so many ways here within Montgomery County government. Uh, your favorite ones My that favorite? have made it a whole lot easier <laughs> for us, uh, county residents. Uh, I think the favorite one for me would be the fact that we now can get information related to storm emergencies uh, during the various storms that we have. We receive so many calls so many inquiries about what is happening as it relates to the weather. Uh, whenever we have snow or even the thought of snow, the telephone jumps off the hook basically. Providing that information to our residents so that they are informed, they have the alerts, and they can adjust accordingly. I think that's one of the favorite ones for me. Well, since you mentioned that I have a really funny anecdote that perhaps you don't know, I used to have a telephone number 301-933 3636, ah. very close to the weather. And what a good day I see Mr. Leggett calling me. <laughs> and when I answer the phone, it was Mrs. Leggett trying to find out about the weather. <laughs> I, mean, I never told you the no, story. No, no, no. So it was her inquiring about the weather, but your name popped on my cell phone and I thought it was pretty funny. Well, I now, changed that number. <laughs> now, now you can see that she did not have to do that. You get it all by alerts. We have the information available and we get it out to our residents as quickly as possible. There you go. Um, let's talk about Project Search. It was also recognized at the national level. Project Search was um, um, 
implemented here in Montgomery County to give internships and eventually uh, job employment w with county government to individuals with disabilities. This was an amazing recognition at the national level, so congratulations for that. Thank you. Let me, let me go back to just give you a sense of this. Um, after the first year, we had a, um, about six or seven years ago, we had a recognition program here right in this very room whereby we recognize certain department heads for their efforts in assisting the county to identify and to employ as interns uh, a number of people with developmental disabilities. It was a very moving program. Uh, some of the parents were here, friends and families of those who had been hired. And when you see the, the, the smiles on the faces, you see the pride in the eyes of the families, and you hear the comments that they make like, well, this is the first time that uh, my young child has ever received a paycheck. They're excited about getting up in the morning and going to work. They feel that pride. I mean, I literally had tears in my eyes at that program, just listening to the testimonies, what the people were saying about the programs we had. I recognized at that point in time uh, that we had programs that would provide, quote, internships, but we had nothing to hire people permanently. And so we needed to make that transition. So I visited sometime later NIH who had a project search program and I was immensely impressed with the enthusiasm, how well it worked at NIH. And I departed that program at NIH and I came back and said, I want that here in Montgomery County because we cannot be a model and ask others to do what we are not doing. So we ultimately changed the law so that we can hire people with developmental disabilities uh, without going through the normal process. We now have a program that helps us to transition people into full-time employment, and it was just such a hit. It's one of the most exciting things, most productive things, and one that I think this county should be immensely proud of. And we're now urging other people to get out and do similarly. You know, the people in our community, a county is judged by three things. One, by the way you treat those in the twilight of life, the dawn of life, but more importantly, how you treat those in the shadows of life. And those that we've been treating in the shadows of life, we've not been treating very well. Project Search helps us to bring those people out of the shadows and to make certain that we give them the kind of life that everybody in this country deserves. And if anybody's interested in that program, just visit our website, MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with I Say I Like It. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Welcome back to this edition of 101. I'm Lorna Vergelli, and uh, we're sitting here talking with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. Uh, Mr. Leggett, the MACO convention brings together county executives and uh, representatives from all of the counties across the state of Maryland. You will be the incoming president pretty soon. Congratulations for that. Um, what were some of the perhaps 
not agreements, but the talks amongst you county leaders when you <laughs> gather all together under one roof and try to figure out things for the betterment of the state. Well, it's a variety of people who attend, all county officials, staff, council members, executives, and leaders throughout the entire state of Maryland are part of what we call MACO, the Maryland Association of Counties, primarily designed to do a number of things, A, to assist in our challenges with the state of Maryland, to make certain that we have all the best practices that any and all counties can follow in terms of how we efficiently and effectively deliver services and programs, and to make sure that we're doing the best that we can for all of our residents and to work together. That's the primary mission of MACO. We come together for a variety of meetings throughout the year. In the summer, in August, we have an annual convention in Ocean City. And at that uh, convention, uh, we have a number of things that occur. A, uh, primarily educating the various people around the state about what has happened in various jurisdictions. We have speakers that come in, we have elected officials that are there, and we come together to strategize about the challenges that we see for the upcoming year i.e. what will happen in Annapolis, what is the latest legislation that will be introduced, do we need to fight a particular piece of legislation, do we need to introduce something, do we need to testify, what are the positions that MACO will take, and can we find common ground among the various jurisdictions around the state of Maryland. It is important for us to do this as it relates to our entire workforce, as it relates to our taxpayers, as it relates to the good governance of the state of Maryland. Large parts of that is done at the local level, at the county and municipality level, and therefore we need to be united in some of the approaches and find ways in which to work together. How challenging uh, is it pre for you personally, being the county executive from Montgomery County, where uh, perhaps across the state we're considered to be the richest county in the state and, and so forth? Well, you know, that's one of the things that I recognized before, that Montgomery County was not viewed as a team player that we're isolated, we didn't participate as much in MACO, we didn't participate as much in some of the governance matters at the local level. And as a result, I thought that that hampered us in terms of getting the support that we need in order to ensure that we get the support for legislation in Montgomery County and others who like to participate and follow. So I became actively engaged in MACO, member of the board of directors, and as you said before, I'm now the first vice president and the incoming president for, for MACO. I wanted this role because I wanted to break that kind of image of the county, that we are, in fact, a team player, that we want to be a part of this, we are part of the state of Maryland, and that we work together, and as Montgomery County helps in this process, it helps everyone. Any particular goals for when you become the president? Well, we start with school construction as a big item. <laughs> and that was one of the, big, the biggest items probably during the whole that's, uh, that's conference. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about celebrations. There have been a whole lot of celebrations uh, uh, during the last few weeks and upcoming as well. We're in the midst of uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. Last year, you uh, launched the Montgomery County Executive Hispanic Gala, which uh, uh, it's a volunteer-run organization and basically fundraises to grant scholarships to Hispanic students. Uh, Sixty scholarships this year, two thousand dollars apiece. For well, that's a, that's a really remarkable achievement because when we look back over a relatively short period of time, uh, this is only the second year the program has been in operation. So I want to thank you and a number of other people throughout the Hispanic community that conceived of the idea, presented it to me in hopes that I would support it and uh, be a leader to make sure that we galvanize the general support for it. And we've done that. Uh, we still have big and better goals to go. I think we can even improve on where we are today. But it starts from something that I think is quite unique for us. We are a very diverse community. Uh, September is, is National Hispanic Heritage Month. And we need to recognize and pay tribute to those in our community of Hispanic origin who have helped make this county, this state, and this nation what it is today. Uh, it is important for us to recognize that. We are growing in numbers, we're growing in terms of the influence and the impact, and I think this month illustrates that. But there are still also large numbers of students who need support, who cannot fully realize the American dream unless they get the education that they want and get the jobs that they obviously comes as a result of that and participates fully 
in, in our community. And so as a result of these efforts, and if we multiply that around the entire state and the nation as a whole, we can reach a large number of students who would not have the opportunity to in fact go on to higher education and do some of the wonderful things that we know that they are capable of doing. And these are scholarships for students who are enrolled in Maryland colleges That's right. and universities. That's right. This year we're presenting 14 institutions across the state. So yeah, that's wonderful. That's a great achievement. Yeah. Uh, it's not only Hispanic Heritage Month, September, but Montgomery County was the first one in the nation to proclaim September also as African Heritage Month, another community that has really grown in, in Montgomery County, the Ethiopian community, and we're, we're, we'll be having several celebrations. You're kicking what off? coming up, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> in fact, uh, when I made that uh, uh, announcement and decided to do this, uh, we were the very first in the entire nation to recognize African Heritage Month. Uh, it was my honor to do that. Uh, again, we have such a diverse community in Montgomery County, all people working together. The pride that we see, the recognitions that are provided, the leadership that emits from our emerges from our community, diverse communities, just such an exceptional place in which to be. Recognizing African Heritage Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, and all the other recognitions that we have in Montgomery County are designed to make sure that people feel welcome, that we treat them with dignity and respect, and that we all can contribute in this great society. There are very few places in the world uh, that can offer what America offers. There are very few communities as diverse uh, as Montgomery County and this is one of the more welcome places in America. I think one of the coolest celebrations that we had in the last few uh, days, weeks, has been the bicentennial of the town of Brookville. That took us back in time to the 1800s. You were dressed up, dressed up with <laughs> in a horse. <laughs> I believe you were the Attorney General back in 1814. How is that? Well, that's interesting. <laughs> But I was able to pull it off. Um, uh, the dress for that period of time uh, was quite warm. It was uh, over 90 degrees for that weekend. Uh, the clothing at that time was heavy, uh, but I thought it was wonderful for the uh, Brookville, town of Brookville, the people, the leaders who put this on, did a remarkable job. And they really, really went out of their ways to make sure that the entire community uh, understood the significance of Brookville being the capital for a day. Uh, President Madison was there and I served as his attorney general. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had some photographs already showing you oh, as yeah. attorney general. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Leggett. That thank wraps you. it up for us today. And thank you for watching. Again, just a reminder for any information about the county to visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for watching.